Today we're reviewing what I think is one of, if not the best looking estate cars on sale at the minute. This is the facelifted, otherwise known as the LCI BMW 5 Series estate. However, with a 2 litre diesel, does it drive as good as it looks? Let's get kicking and see what's what. My name's Tom and you're watching Peregrine Cars. Let's go. Before we start, please like, subscribe and hit the bell if you'd like us to keep bringing you this content. Also, don't forget to follow our socials for updates on our stock. Links in the description below. Now back to that 2 litre diesel. This is the same unit you'll find in many newer BMWs these days. It's now a mild hybrid setup, meaning you have a 48 volt battery powering a 11 horsepower electric motor that is mated in between the engine and the gearbox. This motor is responsible for starting the engine as well as giving you a little boost in power as you need it. Engine wise you're still dealing with the familiar 190 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque. That means 0 to 60 is dispatched in 7.6 seconds, but what about the 30 to 70 sprint? Can an engine this small really propel this 5 series down the road? Let's find out. Well, it's not bad, and yeah, that about explains it really. It's a nice powertrain for cruising, but the near 300 kg lighter BMW 320D we reviewed a few weeks ago, if you want to go see that review by the way, I'll link it in the top right hand corner, was nearly a whole second quicker. So if you value straight line performance, you might want to go for the slightly bigger engine, or well, a 3 Series. Coming to the inside helps you forget that the lesser 3 Series is a bit quicker though as well, just look at it. Big comfy seats, an infotainment screen large enough to be seen from orbit, and just a sense of genuine quality means money well spent. Talking about quality, let me just show you this little clip. Just listen to this boot closing. It's just so solid. Yeah, out of all the cars I've reviewed, this is up there with one of the best put together. Being a 5 Series, the rear offers a vast amount of room for even larger adults, plus with a couple of nifty cup holders and an armrest you'll be happy to spend hours back here. Even the boot looks comfortable to me. <laughs> There's plenty of room, even with the seats up, as you can stow the parcel shelf under the boot floor. Pretty nifty. For carrying longer items though, this 520D is an absolute beast. You can fold the seats down electronically and use the flat load floor to slide pretty much anything in there. Right, tour over, let's see what this luxury estate can do. So we're doing this review a little bit backwards today, it's the before corner, I don't think we will. We have wheel spin there. Suspension in the S-Line cars is very good as well. It's like perfect for UK roads. You can give it 12 tenths, slam on the brakes, and it just kind of seems to just go quicker. This is absolute bliss, I have to say. The seating position is it's just perfect. There is nothing I would improve on. Steering, nice and light, positive, suspension, lets you know what the car's doing, but not intrusive. It doesn't rock the cabin. It's nice and quiet. The drivetrain is unbelievably smooth for a 2-litre diesel. This mild hybrid technology is just ridiculously good. I don't care what anyone else says. It works. It works well. It's just so unintrusive, but it improves your economy at the same time. It's not like a normal start-stop system where you sort of put your foot down and wait for half a second for the power to come in. It just, it's like the engine at zero revs is still on in a way. It's just still ready to go. And it just means you get a totally seamless driving experience. But back to the seats for a second, because oh my God, are they worth it? getting the full, I think it's either 21 or 18 way adjustable seats. Oh yeah, you gotta do it. It is it's unreal how comfortable these seats are. It's like that perfect armchair at Grandad's house that you just fall asleep in within a nanosecond of sitting in it. It really is that good. I've got my heated wheel on, my heated seats. 
I am in heaven. Right. Is it heavenly to park though? Because this is a 5 Series. It is big. And by big, I mean long. This car is nearly 5 metres long. Which means, even though at 1.8 metres wide, you can get into a space fairly easily. You know, you've got plenty of steering lock as well. To actually fit the whole car in it is quite difficult. You have to go back all the way. And even then, I'm not really in the space <laughs> at all. Um, thankfully though, you can open the door. And even if there's a car next to you, you can just about get out. It is a bit of a squeeze though. It is a big car. One thing I just want to point out though, just, just listen to how solid that door is. It's just thunk. <laughs> One continuous thunk. Ah, oh, it's, it's so well made. BMW have just knocked it out of the park on this one. I can't believe how well made their cars are now. Any G Series BMW, go and see one because like the F Series was pretty well made, but you could see like tiny gaps and stuff. But you know, it was still a pretty well made car. This is just on another level. I mean, this beats Audi and Mercedes hands down, I have to say. No creaks, no rattles, everything just feels so solid. All right, let's just give a demonstration of this uh, boost system. So half throttle coming out of junction, and just see, it's just, it just goes. You're not waiting for anything. And this is the two litre diesel, you know. We're not talking about a 530D, 40D, or 50D even. The powertrain is marvellous. Now, the BMW 320D, with the mild hybrid system, uh, is the same powertrain as this. If you want to go see that review, I will put a link in the top right hand corner. So this is just basically a bigger version of the same thing. So it's just a little bit more comfortable, there's a bit more room, it's a bit more airy in the cabin. But I'm worried that's going to take away from a bit of the sportiness and it's going to make it feel a little bit slow at higher speeds. Um, we will find out what it's like later on some B-roads, but first we're going to do a little MPG test just to see what MPG we can get on the motorway. Now BMW claim this will do 67 miles per gallon, and that sounds like a lot to me, however, we manage a 70 in the 3 Series with the same engine as this, so I'm inclined to believe them. Now hopefully it's clear day on the M25 so we can get a pretty realistic figure. I'm going to sit as close to 70 miles an hour as I can. You know, obviously sometimes there's a bit of traffic, but hopefully we can reach that 67 MPG figure. Before that, we're going to get the traction off, get it into sports, and have a quick taste of the handling round and roundabout. Okay, into sports, traction off. We're going to go into sports individual as well, once this screen goes away. Because I've set up the dynamic seat to hook me around the corners. Right, gearbox into sports as well. And should we go for manual? Let's go for manual. Very nice. So we've got heavier steering. No adaptive dampers. Nice indicating, Mr. Tesla. Thank you. But anyway, heavier steering, sharper throttle response. And that's about it, really. Let's give it some. Wee! <laughs> oh, yes! It's a BMW, that's for sure. Even this little two litre diesel has enough torque to chuck us sideways a bit. And even though this is a 1.8 tonne estate car, it controls its mass well. Oh, I love these things. This is actually my first G-Series 5 Series, and what a car to be in. It's the facelift, heads-up display. Oh, it's got so much spec, this car. It is wicked. It doesn't have a panoramic roof, though. Bit weird. Would be one of the first things I'd spec for an estate car. But it does mean there's no creaking coming from the roof, so that's pretty good. Right, enough waffle. Let's get it into Eco Pro, and I will join you on the motorway, and we'll just have a very quick chat about things like road noise and wind noise, and see where we're at. 
let's see if we can get that 67 MPG figure. Right, coming on the motorway, you just give it a little bit of throttle and it just gently glides up to the speed limit. And the first thing I'm noticing is already the sound ending in this car is crazy good. Like, weird good. <laughs> I mean, we're riding on, like, not the smallest wheels, but not big wheels, I suppose. But there is almost zero road noise. I mean, this is, like, not far off from Mercedes S-Class. Like, weird for a 5 Series. Um, yeah, wind noise as well. Very, very low. Visibility is pretty good. you got nice skinny A-pillars, which are a good shape as well, so you can kind of see around them. B-pillar could be a bit further back, but it's not the end of the world. The only thing I'm missing, really, is an adaptive cruise control system. But yeah, this is a mile muncher of a car. I can tell you that already. Right. Oh, look, an ERA V10. Right, stop getting distracted. Okay, <laughs> about 15 to 20 miles on the motorway. Let's see if we can get 67 mpg. Again, I'm going to try and sit as close to 70 as I can, so I better get into the passing lane if I can. It's actually quite a busy day on the M25, annoyingly. Right, I will see you in 20 minutes. section done and yeah 61 and a half mpg now i know it's not 67 mpg but we were sitting at 70 miles an hour for pretty much that you know entire part of the journey and i have to say even though it's not 67 60 like one ish it's insanely impressive for a big car like this with a fundamentally pretty small engine as well like, wow. I mean, you can do a lot of miles in this thing. So, the 3 Series being very slightly lighter and smaller means it's very slightly more efficient, but this is not far off. That's insanely impressive. This powertrain is just... It blows me away, honestly. It really is that good. It's got enough punch, slow down, so you can just, like, gently pick up speed. You know, it only has to shift down one gear where it, it sometimes doesn't even have to shift down a gear. It just has torque everywhere. And it's insanely efficient as well. It's an unbelievably well calibrated car. Let's see how well calibrated it is around some corners. Okay, back into sports, traction in sports as well. The only thing I've left in comfort is the steering as it kind of just gets a bit unnecessarily heavy. Let's see what this 5 Series is like. Wow, lots of front end grip. It's a sign of a very good chassis. Riding on Michelin tyres as well, get my foot down out of the corner. It rotates nicely. The dash going blue, by the way, is the car's way of telling me that I'm using that electric boost system. And you can feel it kick in as well. Like, it's only 11 horsepower, but you feel it there. Like, if I put my foot down now, it's like um, it comes in and then you kind of feel the boost come in. It gives you a little kick of acceleration. Brakes are very well calibrated. BMW did do brakes very well. You just always know the car's going to stop. And this engine is all about riding that torque. For some reason it likes to rev out quite a lot if you leave the transmission in S, but take over control manually and shift at like 4,000 RPM, that's where the sweet spot is. And it just piles on the speed. Steering feel is pretty lacklustre, I have to say, but look at the grip around that corner. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> Almost no body roll as well. Ah, it's a fantastic machine, this. 
absolutely fantastic. I wish they made M5 Estate again. I would want one of those, that's for sure. zf speed gearbox, downshifts very well, upshifts very well. There really is nothing to complain about. Got to be gentle around the, the hearse. Okay, now we can put our foot down again. Oh yes. Not quite enough power in the dry to get it to uh, slide a bit. When it's wet, it definitely does go sideways though. It's just very nice. You can really feel the rear pushing you around the corner. Oh God, the feel you get from the driving seat is just one of like a really well sorted chassis. Everything is in tune with what you're doing. Steering feel could be better, but it's not the worst I've felt of an electronic rack. I think the steering wheel is just too thick. But it just, it has this really sharp, precise front end that BMW seem to really dial in on their cars. It squats into a corner unlike any other manufacturer's cars do. And it just means you go around corners like that and you just place it where you want it. <laughs> it's like crazy. There's no guesswork. It's an absolutely cracking bit of kit. Right, if we slow down here, we can really give it some around this corner. Give people a bit of space. And now there's traffic. Brilliant. Yeah, a little bit too much traffic today. But it's safe to say this is a really fun car to drive for a 2 litre diesel 5 series. I've said it before, but I'll say it again. That is the thing you've got to love about BMWs. No matter which one you buy, they're always fun to drive. They just have this really dialed in chassis that communicates with you and just enables you to have a bit of fun. You know, you can toy around with it a bit. I mean, this is ready to just have a big V8 dropped in it and it would deal with it. The chassis really is that capable. You wouldn't need to do anything to the suspension, really. And that's kind of what Alpine do with their cars. You know, you, you get the M engine, but it's still the kind of comfy M Sport car. It's not the full fat M car. I see why they do it, because these chassis are just cracking. Right, let's go to a tighter B road and see if this thing fits in it. Okay then, let's see what's what. Chassis again, very capable. Controls its weight around the corners well. And it is quick down a B road. Let's see how we deal with the bump here. Very nice. My god, it's so controlled. Gosh. Usually even BMWs can be a bit ratty over that bump. No, oh, this is amazing. How on earth have they made it that good? Alright, sort of launch. See if we can get to 60 before the corner. Yes, we can. Tuck it in. <laughs> oh, wow. They've done an amazing job with the suspension on this. It's so rapid, so controlled. And like, even though it's a big car, you just place it exactly within the millimeter where you want it. What a fantastic bit of kit. This is up there with one of the best cars I've driven, you know that. A two litre diesel five series. <laughs> Out of all the cars I've driven. When a car's just as sorted as this, and just well calibrated, it's hard to beat. 
It's just so in tune with what you want. Like steering does what you want, the engine is fast enough, it responds quick enough. You know, it's not a fundamentally fast car, but it just responds to your input so perfectly that you're not really wanting for anything more. And you can get a lick on in this. I mean, it's not slow, but my goodness, the way the front end holds on around corners is crazy. I mean, part of that's the tyres, but it just digs into the tarmac. Every single component of this car is just perfect. <laughs> I'm, I'm really struggling to find things to complain about, honestly. I need to have a think about it and put it in the conclusion because at the minute I'm gobsmacked how good this thing is. Well, I had a think about it and yeah, I'm just that surprised at how good it is. There are literally zero shortcomings. The design is beautiful, the drive is astounding, and the comfort is way up there with some of the nicest cars I've driven. If you're looking for an estate car, just in general, I really don't see anything beating this to be honest. I mean, the only car that could be better is a Porsche Panamera, but then you're in a totally different tax bracket. So for the money, this BMW does really genuinely offer it all. As always, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, give it a like and why not subscribe? As not only can you see more content like this, you can see everything we have for sale. My name's Tom and you've been watching Paragon Cars. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.